Top of the morning, good afternoon, and hello and welcome to all the coaches. Dermot here from Club Fearless, and we have the lovely Kim with us today, who's also on the team of Club Fearless for Coaches. But she's going to be the demo model today. Did did you know you're going to be a model today, Kim? Oh, my goodness. Like I said, I hope it's a good filter. <laughs> the filters are working overtime for both awesome. of us. Awesome. Yeah. So um, here at Club Fearless, one of the things that I love to do, we focus on helping coaches create their business skills. But we also help them to develop and build their coaching skills. And so today we're going to do a life wheel. Now, a lot of coaches have asked me, Dermot, how do you do a life wheel? Or I remember, you know, back in the day, learning it or hearing about it in school, but I've never really done it. So we thought we'd do a snapshot of a, of, of a life wheel today. They're really, really important. Life wheels are help the client to take a snapshot of where they are in their life currently and where they want to go. So you're looking at the reality of what is and you're looking up the, uh, at the possibility of what could be for the client. It's a very, very important tool. I've used it a lot over the years. I tend to use it with new clients. I'll do a life wheel. And then once I get to know the client, I'll do a values wheel because, you know, we everything is done for a feeling and those feel, feelings are our values. Everything that we feel good about turns into our values or is our values. So doing life fields, uh, life wheels for clients are really, really important. They're a great way to give them a, a first session. They're a great way for the client to see what's on offer in terms of coaching. And they're just a great way to give the client an experience of what it would be like to do some coaching with you. Now, as we say in Club Fearless, um, the coaching skills are as important as the business building skills. So let's jump in. We're going to do a demo with Kim today, a life wheel. Uh, Kim is not an actor. She's a real person in real time, real subjects. We're not making up stuff. Kim is actually bringing her life and she's going to put it here for us to <laughs> to us to us uh, learn from. So let's jump in. I'm going to grab a, uh, a wheel. All right, so I have a little wheel here. All right, Kim, let's jump in. So think about your life, Kim, and think about the different areas of your life. So, you know, a lot of people have, when I do coaching sessions and life wheels with people, uh, you know, some people put on their money, career, home, relationships, spirituality, fun, adventure, um, health, those kinds of things. So uh, in no particular order, Kim, we're going to start at the top and we're going to add your uh, parts of your life into the wheel. And then we'll do a little bit of coaching on that. How does that sound? Yeah, that's good. All right. So what's the first part of your life that you'd like to take a look at today? Family, friends. Okay. So family slash friends. Okay. Next one. Partner. Partner. Now, is that different from family? Yeah. Okay. So it's separate for you. Yeah. Okay. Spirituality. Spirituality. Yeah. Okay. You'll like this next one. Fun hobbies. Now, fun and hobbies, how do you separate the two? Uh, because I learned early on from my kids that I sometimes focus more on the doing versus the being, and I'm not necessarily so fun. So mm -hmm. it's, it's more about, you know, just fun can look for fun things. And then hobbies is for me, things of interest outside almost everything else on the circle. Would so you I say could... that you, you do the hobbies because they allow you to have more fun. It's a way to connect, to have more fun. Not necessarily. So then would it be two separate items? No. Nope. You have them as, as, as one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And for those listening, you know, clients will do that. They may, it may sound like it's two separate hobbies, but for the client, it's one. And so you just write it down as one. It's totally fine. Uh, okay. Wellness. 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 And is that different than health or is it the same thing? 
Uh, wellness is more encompassing. Yeah, got it. Kind of more holistic. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Finances. Finances. Yeah, that's a big one for a lot of people. A lot of um. We have a lot of thinking around our finances mm -hmm. because it impacts when we look at the wheel, it can impact everything. Our wellness, having fun, you know, it, it's a big one. Uh, all right. What else, Kim? Uh, personal growth and learning. Yeah, so personal growth slash learning. Got it. And do you have one more? I mean, you can keep that. Yep. You can keep that open. Or if you have one more, we'll put it on there. Yep. Career slash work. Okay. All right. And what's nice about these topics are is they're pretty. Um, they're pretty standard. You know, most people will talk about you know fun. I love that you have fun on there because I will coach clients and. They'll put everything up there except fun. <laughs> and I'll say, do you want to have any fun in your life? And they say, oh, my God. Because a lot of the things that we do are actually because we want to have that feeling. Everything is done for a feeling. We want to have that feeling of having fun in our lives. So it's interesting. A lot of my clients don't put it up there. But uh, you're way ahead of the game, Kim. All I right. might have been working with somebody that talks about it a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So take a moment, Kim, and just have a look at the wheel. Before we do any coaching on it, just share me what you're noticing as you look at the wheel. Any thoughts? I believe that my wheel hasn't changed over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The and why do you think that is? Um, I think because they're fairly reflective of my values. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And not to say my values haven't shifted, but they would still fit in here. Yeah, yeah, you'll find that beliefs change, but values deepen. And so this is a great example of somebody's values who over the years have, have as you say, shifted. Another way of saying that could be deepened. Yeah, yeah. And you'll find that uh, your values don't change. Beliefs about, you know, your family and friends, your partner, spirituality, fun, wellness, and finance, they've all changed. But those values behind haven't. So that's a really nice example of that value in action. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Kim. It's only one question. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite you to slow down and, and to not overthink the question, but not underthink it either. Kind of just go with, go with, you know, what you feel is a good number. So I'm going to add, and then we're going to scale satisfaction, satisfaction of your family and friends, your partner, where you are with your finances currently. So this is a snapshot. A wheel is a snapshot of where you are. Now, it's not to be used as a judgment. So, you know, I'm going to invite you know, to look at it and say, oh, God, I'm only a two in my you know, spirituality or what are you for? It's not, that's not what we're doing today. We're looking at where you are. And then we're going to look at where some areas might need some more nurturing. They might need some more love. They might need some more care. They might need some more time and attention. We're just looking at where you are today with no judgment and, and the possibility of where you want to go. So here's the question. And we're just going to start with family and friends, and we're just going to go clockwise. No, no, you know, importance in terms of where to start. Um, on a scale of one to 10, satisfaction. Satisfaction is neutral. It's a great way to scale things is to use satisfaction. So on a scale of one to 10, in terms of family and friends, and if it's okay with you, I'll just, I'll just go around in a circle just for, for safety of, you know, use, saving time. Uh, but coaches, as you listen, you can ask the client, where do they want to start? And then you can ask the client to pick the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. But just for today, I'm just going to go in a circle. Uh, so in terms of family and friends, 
and we're scaling status, your satisfaction around your family and friends today, where you are today. One being not very satisfied. There's no such thing as zero. And 10 is you are, you know, completely satisfied. You couldn't be, you're over the moon. Number 10, where would you say you are with family and friends today? Uh, seven. Out of seven. Okay. And we're going to put, so coaches, as you move through the, through the wheel, just put a seven and you go around the wheel and you put the, the numbers. Okay. And I'll color it in and just in, as soon as I put the numbers in. Okay. Partner on a scale of one to 10, one being not satisfied and 10 be completely satisfied. Where would you say you are with your partner today? Why a six. At a six. Okay. All right. Take a moment and just feel into, think about spirituality, where you are today, everything that's gotten you here today. On a scale of one to 10, one being, you know, not very satisfied, 10 being just completely satisfied. Where would you say you are with spirituality in your life today? A nine. At a nine. Okay. Wow. What would you say? So you're at a nine. What would you say has made the difference that you're that you're way up there on that? Age. What would you say is one thing that you do that 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 has brought you to a nine? Uh, so like I said, it come. I think for me, it's come with age and being OK, um, having the views and beliefs that I do around spirituality mm -hmm. and being comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's a great reflection of values. They deepen over time. And as they deepen, uh, you know, you go from spirituality to five, six, seven, and you, you grow from there. Uh, okay, fun and hobbies. Using this as one thing, um, taking a snapshot of where you are today, knowing that there's no judgment and, and there's always room to grow, 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 grow. Uh, where would you say you are on the scale today? One is not satisfied. Ten is completely satisfied. Six. Out of six. Okay. All right. Take a moment and think about, feel into your wellness on a scale of one to 10. One being not satisfied, 10, you know, little satisfaction, 10 being completely satisfied with your wellness. Where would you say you are? Seven. Let's go with seven. What is seven? And you kind of said that with a question mark. <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking at my other ratings. I'm like, is it a six? Is it a seven? So you're not comparing now your other ratings to wellness, well, are you? A little bit from yeah. a satisfaction level. Yeah. A little bit, yes. As best as you can, you know, just focus on, you know, wellness. Where am I with wellness today? Where's my level of satisfaction with my wellness? Knowing that it will change. You know, next week I could ask you and you could be at a four, but just currently <laughs> today, you're at a seven. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. All right. In terms of your finances, you know, uh, one being not very satisfied, 10 being completely satisfied. Where, where would you say you are today? Eight. You're at an eight. Okay. Uh, personal growth and learning. On a scale of one to 10, one being not very satisfied, 10 being completely satisfied. Where would you say you are today? At nine. At nine, okay. And career and work. Scale of one to 10, where you are today, one being not very satisfied, 10 being completely satisfied with your career and work. Six. And a six. Okay, beautiful. Now, I like to uh, put a little circle around these. A circle for the brain means completion. So as we put a little circle around these numbers, it just means for today, these numbers are complete. No judgment. And it's also a way for the brain to catch it and see the number. And then I'm going to take a minute, Kim, and I'm just going to... Uh, as best as I can, I'm going to color in 
of the pie. So seven. So you're at a seven here. So as best as I can, I'm going to color in. Now, I should have asked you, I forgot. What's your favorite color? You know, it's okay you did because it's yellow and yellow doesn't show up well on this. Mm -hmm. So uh, Yellow. So why yellow? What do you like about yellow, Kim? I uh, like the warmth of it. So it reminds mm. me of sunshine and it's bright. You uh, you like being in the sunshine, you do? Uh, up to a certain temperature, but yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yes, I, I love, love the sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Out here in California, I don't know if you like the sunshine this year. It was boiling. Probably boiling where you are too. Yeah, it was a little warm for this chassis. <laughs> yeah. I but you. I love the sunshine. Yeah. All right, so I'm just filling in now. So nine represents, you know, 90% of the pie. And so I'm just filling in. Now, this allows your visual brain and your emotional brain to really see the growth, to really see the level of value that you have in each of these areas, Kim. And it also allows your emotional brain to see the growth and to also see the possible growth of what could be. You know, we have 10, but I mean, you're, you can you can go to to much, much more than 10, but just for our conversation today. So, Kim, take a moment and, and, and usually coaches listening, I will ask the client for their favorite color and then I will create it in their favorite color because that's that's their color is also value. If you look around your room, uh, your home, Kim, you'll see that. Some of the things that you own reflect your color. You know, you'll have the yellow things in your home that reflect that value. What would you say the value of yellow is for you? How does it make you feel? Warmth. Warmth, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So take a look for a moment, Kim, at the wheel. And just notice what you notice. Take a little look at it. No judgment. Just take a little look at it. Just share, what do you notice as you as you look at the wheel? Share some thoughts, what you notice. Um, I think one of the things that's reflected in the wheel is a shift in the life season I'm at. So mm -hmm. with some kids getting older, some a couple younger, but older, um, more independent and on their own, um, that middle life, or as Brene Brown ca calls it, the midlife, um, and so the wheel reflects this. What else? Nothing surprises me. Like there's nothing that jumps out and I think, oh, so no surprises. Yeah, Anything I think the biggest, that's new or different thing for is you? It, nope. Is it is I know that it, it notice that it reflects where I'm at. Yeah. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Life season, however you want to, however I want to say it. Yeah. Let's take another little look at it. What would you say you feel best about? on the wheel. Uh, I think for myself personally, if I'm only looking at myself, it would be the work I've done around the personal growth and learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, in terms of personal growth and learning and also spirituality, um, would you could you say there's one thing that you've been doing that has brought you to a nine? Or is it a you know, is it a consortium of different things? I think it's a consortium, um, but it speaks to my I have a value around learning and growth. Um, so because I've put a lot of time and attention to that over the years. Um, I see how it's played out for me 
in other areas. So um, while I don't think I'm perfect when I look at family, for example, I believe I'm a better parent than I might have been, not perfect, but better, um, had I not put that pers attention around personal growth and learning. So whether it was getting a coach, you know, training that I've done over the years, reading, like anything like that, mm -hmm. I think has benefited myself. So part of the inspiration for that was you wanted to be a better parent? Well, it could be anything, a better partner, better parent, better friend, better, you know, HR professional, a better coach, any of that. And if you had to say why personal growth and, and learning, I mean, you, you kind of already said a little bit, but if you had to say the number one reason why that's so important to you, what, what would you say that is? I think because I have a personal belief um, that myself and everybody else always has that opportunity to learn, to try something new, to reach you know, a different potential. I get, I guess it gets, comes back to that value of learning and that ability to create your life, create my life. Yeah. What would you it's say? It's not stagnant. It's not stagnant. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like to be stagnant. You like to be stretching, growing. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not all the time, but yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Um, All right. So let's take a little look at this, Kim, your wheel. And let's pick one area of your life that you would like to have a little bit of movement on. And again, it could be the nine. It mm -hmm. could be the six. It could be the seven. You know, it doesn't really matter. But what's one area of your life that you would like to grow a little bit more in yeah actually there's two that jump out at me and that would be uh partner and wellness mm -hmm. okay so where would you like to begin uh let's start with partner part okay so without getting too personal tell me a little bit about uh why this is important to you mm-hmm uh, so I think it speaks again to the season of life I'm in and Jason and I are in with kids that are a bit older and more independent. Um, and with four kids and him traveling at least half a month at a time, uh, it, it it's easy for us to put our focus on the family and what needs to be done. And when the kids are little, like it, it naturally happens. But now what I'm noticing for myself and us is we our kids still need our time and attention, but in a different way. And so now I, I believe we've got an opportunity to put a bit more focus on us and what we want. Um, so that for me means like, what are some hobbies we might want to do together? Mm. You know, can we could probably go for a hike for a full day because we have a bit more freedom now. Um, and so I think for me, putting that attention on uh, Jason and I, will help us going forward into retirement when kids eventually leave home. I hope they're going to leave home, all of them at some point. <laughs> or we will I'm just sure leave the home to just them, them, whichever. Out, <laughs> whichever. <laughs> just lock um, the door. They'll come home one day and the door will be locked. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll leave the home to them and we'll go. I don't yeah, know. there you go. Yeah. Get in the but camper. I, also, I also believe by making our partnership, our relationship even stronger, it will benefit the family. Yeah. It will it will benefit, you know, my hobbies and fun. And so it does it does go into the other areas as well. Mm. So talk about that for a moment, because that's one of my questions. Actually, you yeah. jumped right in. So it's perfect. Like if you were to move on the scale, let's say from just a six to a seven, seven, mm -hmm. uh, where else do you see that that movement impacting in a positive way? The other areas of your life. Uh, so definitely family parenting the kids when um, our relationship is even stronger and we've spent more time together that helps with that um and I want to be able to do more stuff with him together we don't do a lot of couple things because it's usually a passing of okay I'm, I'm off to hockey I got this one to can't like what so uh having more time together to do some hobbies together I'd like that 
Yeah. I'd like to be able to do that. So that would impact the fun and hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked a bit about, uh, because we're at that middle age, uh, might there be some stuff we can do? Maybe we do start going to the gym together or we now walk every day together when he's home. So again, it would impact wellness. Um, what about career and work? Would it would it impact career and work if you had a... a, a... Yep. I think so because again right now sometimes we're passing ships in the night between his job and mine um, but it would if we were spending more time together it would give me more time to talk to him about what I've got going on career work-wise and get his support not that I don't have a support that's not right his perspective his input maybe some insights things he'll notice that I hadn't thought about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I shouldn't say support's not the right word because he does support me I, I more input Input, yeah. He thinks differently than me, so I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what would you say is the feeling that you're looking for with 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 the partnership moving, you know, from a, a six to a seven, possibly? What what's the feeling that you're looking for in that? Yeah, yeah. And this is also one of my values: so stronger connection. Connection. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna put that up there because it's partnership, but but the value or the the feeling is uh connection, is connection. Yeah. yeah yeah which is actually Let's see i'll just put it up there like that okay connection beautiful all right so kim what would be one simple way that maybe you already know to do that would move you from a six to a seven in terms of your partner what would yeah. be something simple and easy to do that you could you could do that would move you from a six to a seven yeah it was something we used to do and it's totally dropped off the radar but it was fantastic is we committed um to a date night actually just a date once per month so sometimes that was in the afternoon we'd go we'd sneak away to an afternoon matinee because then we didn't have to worry about a babysitter so logistically, it made it easy, but just at least once a month, a date. Okay. Date night. All right. And how do you think that would impact in a positive way your partner with, with Jason? Yeah, because it increase, increases the feelings the of connection. connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, increases our feeling of connection, gives us time focused on us. And we would do our best on those dates to not talk about the kids and that. So it didn't, again, become focused on kids or our family or whatever. So it was focused on us. And how could you make this date night special? If you could do one thing to make it different or special than what you used to do, how? what would you do? What might you do? Uh, maybe try some new things. Last time we went out, we went to a comedian, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah we used to do that right and so yeah we did it was a lot of fun you would hope the comedian was fun <laughs> yeah he was, it was good and we tried a new restaurant and it was good what else how else could you make this date night special more special than usual one thing um dress up yeah depending what we're doing i dress up Pom-poms are always a good choice. I have pom-poms <laughs> for hockey, so I can totally bring them. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Anything else you want to share about that? No, other than getting it on the calendar. That was the real key to um, making it happen. Yeah. So when when yeah. do you want to make this? Is this really important to you, Kim? Yeah. Okay. So if it's that important, let's put it on the calendar. Yeah. So so when's this? when is this going to happen? Um, I'm looking at my calendar, uh, to see when he is back. Actually, I will put it for Friday because we'll have his October schedule on Thursday. Friday. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's that? back by Friday. So it's, uh, Friday, September 22nd. All right. So I'm just going to write this down here on the bottom. Friday, September 22nd, date night. Well, we'll set up a date. Hopefully, we'll do one for September if we can with this schedule and for October. Okay. Now, do you see anything getting in the way here? Kids, uh, 
anything? Yeah, ho- hockey schedule, which we don't have yet. So we'll just, we'll have to pick a few dates and see what one will work, but we're good. If we commit to it, we'll do it. Okay. And I'll, I'll keep us on track. All right. Beautiful. Um, okay. And that feels doable. And now would that yeah. move you from a six to a seven or a six to another number? No, probably a seven. A seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to leave it there, Kim, but we'll, we'll take with the same process would be used for, what was the second one that you were talking wellness. about? Wellness. About wellness. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave it there because I just want to do a, a snapshot training for all the coaches out there. So the same questions would apply, you know, in terms of wellness, where do you want to be on the scale? I want to move from a seven to an eight. You know, it's easy to move from a seven to eight instead of a seven to a 10. It's too much of a jump for people. So seven to an eight, eight to a nine, nine to a 10. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's complete here, Kim. Um, how is it useful to talk about uh, yeah, um, your partner, your life wheel? What, what did you notice? How is it useful? Yeah, for me, it was useful to realize um, I had, because I had not thought about it being a season and it's like, yeah, that really does reflect the season I'm in. So that was an insight that I had from it. I also find life wheels helpful for me because then if I go back in say three, six months time, can revisit those scores to be like, hey, has it shifted? Why or why not? Now, what am I noticing? Yeah, and that's the helpful part is putting those numbers, you know, on so that in two months you come back and you go, oh, wow, I was at a six. Has it shifted? And so I will take the client, you know, I'll take that life wheel out every month or every two months, especially if we're working on three or four areas at a time, because you can work at one area at a time you can work with the client three or four areas at a time. Um, now we just did a 30 minute session with a wheel, but you typically, when I work with a, with a client, I'll do an hour or an hour and a half with a life wheel and I'll work on, you know, one or two areas. I won't do any more than that because typically I meet with the client every two weeks. And so you want to leave space for those action steps, you know? Um, all right. Beautiful coaches. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you so much for being Thank our lovely you. demo model today. I hope this was useful. I hope it was helpful. The biggest thing to remember with wheels is to have fun with the client. Allow the client to explore the different areas. And depending on time, you know, one to three areas is, is pretty good to get an action step. Get one action step on each area. And then, as you noticed in, in, in the session with Kim, I asked him, what was the feeling? that she's looking for with, with with deepening her partnership with Jason. And she said, connection. That's the value. The feeling is always, and you could ask the client, you know, what's the feeling that you want to get from this? And they will tell you what the, what the deeper value or the, the goal behind the goal or the value, the feeling behind the goal. Um, you know, goal is growing the partnership, but the feeling behind it is connection or whatever that might be. So enjoy this training. We uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch it. I'm Dermot Butterly, also known as the Celtic Coach, and this is Club Fearless for Coaches. We support coaches, we help coaches, we train coaches to create paying clients through service creativity and doing what makes your heart sing. Until the next time, think big, have fun, and stay curious. Cheers.